Hey, I'm Craig Rochelle, the pastor of Life Church, and I just want to say thank you to all the gentlemen who've gathered together. There's something special and powerful that takes place when a bunch of men of God come together and drop down the walls and just live authentically and sharpen one another in a really, really powerful way. What I want to do today is introduce a study that I think has the potential to really give you focus and vision in your life. Uh, if you go all the way back to the Garden of Eden, when God created Adam and Eve, what was the first sin? Well, you could probably say the first sin was Eve's rebellion against God when she ate the forbidden fruit. But if you ask yourself what was man's first sin, chances are you might say man's first sin was passivity. In other words, he didn't step in. He didn't say, no, that's not what God said. He just sat by passively. Let's be honest. There are few things worse being a man than living a passive, dull, and apathetic life. And that's why I believe that God is calling you to the wild life. Now, obviously by wild life, I'm not talking about what you did your freshman year of college or somewhere along the way. What I'm talking about is a life that's lived courageously in bold obedience to the God who loves you. Let's be honest, that's not where a lot of us are living right now. If you're really truthful right now, you might say, I believe in God, but I'm addicted to pornography. Or I believe in God, but I'm stuck in this dead end job. Or I believe in God and I wanna raise godly kids, but life is so busy and so difficult that I'm just existing. I'm trying to pay the bills, I'm trying to get through. The good news is with all my heart, I know that God has something so much more for you. It's a life of radical obedience to an incredible God. I wanna introduce our speaker today uh, who will lead us through the wildlife. His name is John Eldridge. He's the New York Times best-selling author of the book, Wild at Heart. His ministry has impacted my life in a significant way. You're gonna find out this dude is the real thing. Open up your heart, open up your minds, open up your life, because it's time to live the wild life to glorify God. Father, thank you for bringing us together in this time. Thank you for the opportunity to connect as men and to go deeper into your heart for us, deeper into the life of God and deeper into our own questions, our own journey as men. We invite you to come and fill this time. Fill this time, God. Fill it with your love. Fill it with goodness. Fill it with your truth. Come and speak to us as your sons. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Welcome, brothers. I'm John Eldridge, and it's great to have the opportunity to speak to you. So what does it mean to be a man? What does a man look like in today's society? How do I live as a man? How do I love as a man? What does that look like at work? What does that look like at home? How do I parent, right, as a good father? So what I'd love to do in our time together is take a journey into the deep questions I think most men share in common and into the things that the scripture has to say to us about authentic masculinity. Let's start in Genesis. Let's start with the introduction of the human race because this is a fascinating thing that goes on here. God creates the gorgeous world around us, the waterfalls and the thunderstorms and the deserts and the oceans. And then as his crowning touch, he creates the human race. But here's what he says. He says, let us make human beings in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, you know, all the living things on the earth. So God created the human race in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. This is so deep to our humanity, who we are as persons, either masculine or feminine, that you're going to see this then run all through the rest of the scriptures. So what I wanna do is take us through some, some categories the scripture gives us, particularly in Adam's story as it begins to unfold, because I think there are 
core desires and core questions deep in every man's heart. I think we need battle, and I think we need a sense that we are winning or able to win the battles we face. I think we need adventure. I think God created us to come alive in our lives. And I think we need beauty. We need love. We need romance, okay? So let's, let's watch this unfold in the story of Adam's life. <clears throat> First comes the warrior. When God blesses um, the human race, when he blesses men and women, this, this gift that he's created now, he says, I want you to rule over the earth. And the Hebrew there is fierce mastery. Fierce mastery. There is a warrior in the heart of every man. And you don't need a theology degree to know this, right? Look at little boys. Just watch what they gravitate to. Look at the video games young men love. And, and watch the movies, right, that, that end up being kind of the popular movies for guys. You will, you will see the desire to be the warrior, to be the hero, to come through. I was in the supermarket the other day, and there was this little guy, and he was still in his, he was probably three, four years old, he was still in his Spider-Man pajamas. And you know the story, like mom could not get those off of him, right? She had to bring him to the market in his Superman, his Spider-Man pajamas, because like the little guy wants to be, you know, the hero, right? He wants to have powers and be amazing. And I remember I was six years old when Batman kind of came onto the scene in the comic book world quite a few years ago. And for my sixth birthday, my parents gave me a Batman costume. I did not take it off for a week. I ate in it, I slept in it. All I wanted to do was be that guy. Okay, so let me, let me connect this. Deep in every man's heart, we know we're gonna face a lot of battles. You probably are now. Battles for your dreams, battles for your relationships, battles for your work, right? Battles for your marriage. Battles for the church, right? We face all kinds of battles. And there's this deep question in us of, do I have it? Do I have what it takes to handle everything life has to throw at me? And that's why the, the development of the warrior heart is so crucial in us. Now, I, I get it, I get it. Not every guy loves Braveheart. Not every guy loves Gladiator. I, I don't actually love all the blood and guts things myself. But you guys, you guys who play tennis, you guys who play racquetball, you guys who play chess, do you like losing? Like, oh, there's something in us that just hates that. We hate to lose. Okay, so the warrior, the warrior is in there. And you just watch little boys. If you get a group of little boys together, you know, dozen little boys, and you give them a tub of water balloons, do they need further instruction? Like they get it, right? They get the battle. They get the idea of the, the war that we're in and they get the idea that there's something in us that is supposed to rise up. Okay, so let's come back to the Imago Day. When God sets Israel free from bondage in Egypt, 400 years of slavery, right? And, and they're crossing, you know, into the promised land. They're gonna, they're gonna go through, the, you know, the, the parted seas, the Red Sea. Pharaoh and his army come barreling down on them. They're going to annihilate them. One last chance. God destroys their enemies. And I think they're sort of stunned. And they're uh, watching this on the other side, you know, of the shore. And they look at each other, and it's Exodus 15, 3. Here's what they say. They say, the Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Our God is a warrior God. He fights for the freedom of his people. And he imbued in men this warrior heart. And it's the quality that enables a man to finish his PhD. It's the quality that enables an artist to complete his first film. It's the, it's the quality that it allows you to battle through your depression, to overcome your addictions. Like you need that warrior heart in you. It's essential to who we are as men, okay? And, and Adam's gonna need that. He's gonna need that as the story begins to unfold because the next thing that happens is this. So um, 
when they go back into Genesis chapter two, you kind of you get the creation story, but you get a little deeper cut. You get some more um, kind of facts and a more intimate experience of it. And it says that God formed us out of the dust of the earth and he breathed the breath of life into us and man became a living being. And fascinating, listen to this. It says, then he took the man he had created and he put him in the garden, okay? The garden of Eden. <clears throat> there is something in us as men that was made in the outback, something in us that was made in the wild. Have you noticed the delight of little boys to get dirty? You know how much they just love mud puddles and, you know, making a mess of things, making, you know, teenage boys are great at this, right? Making a mess of things. There's something in us that knows we're not meant to be entirely tamed. We're not made to be entirely domesticated. And here's why. Because adventure is a spiritual longing that God put in every man's soul. If you begin to watch the, the biblical narrative with Abraham and <clears throat> Joseph and, you know, all, all the guys, Gideon and then David and then the disciples and the apostle Paul, every time God gets a hold of a man's life, he leads him into a great adventure, right? It was, um, I think it was more than 150 years ago that Thoreau said, most men live lives of quiet desperation. And the reason why is they have no adventure. Their lives are boring and boredom is soul killing. Okay, you've got to have some place in your life where you are coming alive. And I, you, you ask the guys that you're hanging out with, right? Either this evening or, you know, over dinner, at work, you know, during a break, ask guys to tell you the most exciting moments in their lives. And they might tell you about the birth of a child. They might tell you about, you know, the day they met their wife or something like that. But you will hear stories of adventure. You'll hear, oh, there was this time that our friend, he loaned us his sailboat. And we really didn't know what we were doing. Went out on the ocean, storm comes in. And like, we thought we were going to die. But I never felt more alive in my life. Like adventure causes us to rise up as men. It calls us out. It calls us up. And I believe that God has a great adventure for every man. I think he has many things that he's calling us into as men. And it's going to take the warrior heart and it's going to take the courage for adventure to rise up and into those things. I thought it was fascinating. I was reading the Wall Street Journal and it, it calls itself Adventures in Capitalism, right? Starting a business right? Starting a church, chasing a dream, getting into a relationship, right? All the adventures that God has for us are deep in our masculine DNA because they're right there in Adam's story. When God puts man in the earth, not a symphony has been written, not a mountain has been climbed, right? Nobody's mapped, right? DNA, all of it is waiting to be discovered in the earth. Everything, the music, the architecture, all of it is a gift for us to explore. So God invites us into adventure. All right, last category. <clears throat> so you're going along in Genesis, right? Adam's created in the image of a warrior God. He's, he's, he's set in a world that is filled with adventure. And then who comes along, right? Late in Genesis chapter two, Adam names the animals and God says, something about my perfect world of Eden is actually not good. It's the first time he says it's not good. And, and he says, it's not good for man to be alone. So he puts Adam to sleep. You might remember the story. He takes a rib out. He fashions Eve. And none of us have recovered from the surgery, right? We are haunted by the golden haired woman. We, Adam wakes up. Okay, this is a guy who has never seen a woman. He wakes up and there is a naked goddess standing there, right? And he's like smitten, like, that's it. You know, it's that reaction that you have. You Try and hold a Bible study at the beach, right? Girls, competitive beach volleyball going on nearby. Like, it can't be done. Beauty is captivating. Beauty is alluring. Beauty causes a man to 
Yeah, wake up. It gets his attention. Now, I, I know, I know, I know. Like our sexuality and our masculinity and brokenness and confusion, and it's gotten a lot of us into some pretty serious trouble. I get that. I get that. But our brokenness does not mean the gift itself is bad. The gift is good. The gift is beautiful. Our sexuality, our gender, the relationship of men and women was meant to be something absolutely wonderful and filled with pleasure. I mean, seriously, like people question the goodness of God. And I just want to say, he gave you sex. Like, can we just answer that God is lavishly good? He's kind, he's loving, he's generous. He wants love. He wants intimacy for us. But the deal is this, Eve and beauty and romance and love and sexuality and kind of all those questions, this is the biggest dilemma of our lives, right? I mean, men, men will sink the ship over this. They will ruin kingdoms over this, right? And God is inviting Adam into a story that he doesn't fully understand. Eve, Eve bears the image of God too, but not like Adam. And when little boys want to jump off the roof, who do they ask? They don't ask mom, they ask dad, right? But when they hurt themselves, who do they run to? They run to mom because Eve, Eve is the incarnation of mercy, or at least she was meant to be. She's the incarnation of intimacy, of unconditional love, a mother's love, right? She is God's representation of beauty on the earth, and she is mystery, right? So this is the area that things get most cloudy for men, but here's the deal. In our masculine journey, we long for a love that is real. We long for a love that will last a lifetime. We long for intimacy, yeah, yeah, we long for sex too, but it's not just about sex. It's about the life of the heart. Okay, so two more verses here. First off, Proverbs 4, verse 23, where it says, <clears throat> above all else, guard your heart. Watch over your heart because it is the wellspring of life within you. Okay, the life of the heart is everything. Okay, and most men try and fix their lives. They try and figure out their story by ignoring the life of the heart. Just tell me what to do. Tell me how to parent. Tell me how to get ahead in my career. Tell me what I'm supposed to study in school. It doesn't work. You can't ignore the life of the heart, all right? And the, and the authentic masculine journey is a journey of the heart, right? It's, it's into the battle and into the warrior. It's into the adventure and into that craving we have in us to come alive. And it is into our sexuality and beauty and love and Eve. Like the battle is down at the level of the heart. And now for a mind-blowing verse. So you've got Proverbs 4.23, and then you've got um, David, who was a man's man, by the way, in Psalm 119. Listen to what he says in verse 32. He says, I run in the path of your commands because you've set my heart free. Like, holy cow, if you could have that, if we could find that, you... You have set my heart free, God, free. Free from what? <clears throat> We're gonna take a journey together deep into the masculine journey. And I just wanna point out that at any given time in a man's life, I think God's up to two things. I think something in us needs to be healed. Something in us needs to be restored. Life is brutal on the masculine soul. And there are wounds that are taken and there are traps that we fall into. And there's the addiction and then the guilt and the shame. And like our hearts, our hearts need healing. They need restoration as men. At any given time, God's up to two things. He's healing something in us, but he's also dismantling something in us. Because over the course of our lives, we create a false self. We create a false construct. We, we fake it, right? Let's be honest. And so God is constantly trying to dismantle the false self while he is healing the true man so that we can say, we can say like David, God, I am running in 
every path you have for me, all your commands, your instructions, everything you have for me, because you set my heart free. Okay. That is a journey worth taking, and I hope that you'll join us on it. Thank you.